Let's walk through the extremely interesting chapter of grade 9 physical features of India. Hello and welcome to IC Kids. Hope you enjoyed this chapter about the amazing land of India. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon too. India has practically all major physical features of the earth. That is mountains, plains, deserts, plateaus and islands. The land of India displays great physical variation. Geologically, the peninsular plateau constitutes one of the ancient land masses on the earth's surface. It was supposed to be one of the most stable land blocks. The Himalayas and the northern plains are the most recent land forms. From the viewpoint of geology, Himalayan mountains form an unstable zone. The whole mountain system of Himalaya represents a very youthful topography with high peaks, deep valleys and fast flowing rivers. The northern plains are formed of alluvial deposits. Alluvial deposits are the materials deposited by rivers. It consists of silt, sand, clay, gravel as well as much organic matter. The peninsular plateau is composed of igneous and metamorphic rocks. There are gently rising hills and wide valleys. The major physiographic divisions of India are the Himalayan mountains, the northern plains, the peninsular plateau, the Indian desert, the coastal plains and the islands. The Himalayas are considered as geologically young, which means that they are still rugged with very few signs of erosion. These mountains are formed only a few million years ago and are still uplifted due to tectonic forces. The Himalayas are structurally folded mountains as they were formed when two or more of Earth's tectonic plates were pushed together. The Himalayas stretch over the northern borders of India. These mountain ranges run in a west to east direction from the Indus to the Brahmaputra. The Himalayas represent the loftiest and one of the most rugged mountain barriers of the world. They form a boundary against all the neighboring countries. They form an arc which covers a distance of about 2400 kilometers. Their width varies from 400 kilometers in Kashmir to 150 kilometers in Arunachal Pradesh. However, the altitudinal variations are greater in the eastern half than those in the western half. The Himalaya consists of three parallel ranges in its longitudinal extent. A number of valleys lie between these ranges. The northernmost range is known as the Great or Inner Himalayas, also called Himadri. The range lying to the south of the Himadri forms the most rugged mountain system and is known as Himachal or Lesser Himalaya. The outermost range of the Himalayas is called the Shivaliks. Let's talk about the Great or Inner Himalayas, also known as Himadri Range. Himadri Range is the most continuous range consisting of the loftiest peaks with an average height of 6,000 meters. It contains all the prominent Himalayan peaks. These are some highest peaks of the Himalayas. Please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for future. And if you are liking the video, please don't forget to like and share. Thank you. Moving on. The folds of the great Himalayas are asymmetrical in nature. 
the core of this part of himalayas is composed of granite it is perennially snow bound and a number of glaciers descend from this range glaciers are huge thick masses of ice they form when lots of snow falls in one location for many many years over time decades or even centuries the snow on the bottom gets squished down by the weight of the falling new snow this compressed snow becomes ice forming a glacier some glacier descending from the himadri are the gangotri glacier which is one of the largest glaciers in the himalayas and is the primary source of ganges the largest river in india chaturangi which later joins gangotri glacier some other glaciers include kharak glacier sato pant kamet milam and pindari glacier let's see some of the passes that lie in the great himalayas the karakoram pass is a 18176 feet mountain pass between india and china in the karakoram range shipkila pass which is one of india's border posts for trade with tibet located on the old silk road natula pass connects sikkim to china's tibet autonomous region situated at an altitude of 4331 meters near the western boundary of arunachal pradesh in the greater himalayas bomdila pass connects arunachal pradesh with lhasa Let's see some of the Indian states where the highest peaks are located. The third highest peak in the world at 8586 meters Kanchenjunga peak is in Sikkim. Kangto peak at 7090 meters is a mountain of the eastern Himalayas. Kamet Peak, Hardeol Peak, Chokamba Peak, Trisul Peak and Nanda Devi Peak are in Uttarakhand. Nanda Devi is the second highest mountain in India after Kanchenjunga and the highest located entirely within the country. The peaks in Jammu and Kashmir include Saltoro Kangri Peak, Saser Kangri Peak, Mamostong Kangri Peak and Rimo Peak. Rio Pargil is located at the border between Himachal Pradesh, India and Tibet. Mount Tempu is a peak of the Barail range rising at the mountainous border of Manipur and Nagaland in India. Now comes the range lying to the south of the Himadri. It forms the most rugged mountain system and is known as Himachal or Lesser Himalaya. The ranges are mainly composed of highly compressed and altered rocks. The altitude varies between 3700 and 4500 meters and the average width is of 50 kilometers. While the Pir Panjal range forms the longest and the most important range, the Dholadhar and the Mahabharat ranges are also prominent ones. This range consists of the famous Valley of Kashmir, the Kangra and Kullu Valley in Himachal Pradesh. This region is well known for its hill stations. For example, the towns of Masuri, Ranikhet, and Nalital in the state of Uttarakhand in the Himachal ranges are popular hill stations. The outermost range of the Himalayas is called Shivalik. 
they extend over a breadth of 10 to 50 kilometers and have an altitude varying between 900 and 1100 meters these ranges are composed of unconsolidated sediments brought down by the rivers from the main himalayan ranges located farther north these valleys are covered with thick gravel and alluvium the longitudinal valley lying between lesser himalaya and the shivaliks are known as dunes dehradun kotli dun and patli dun are some of the well known dunes besides the longitudinal divisions the himalayas have been divided on the basis of regions from west to east these regions have been demarcated by river valleys for example the part of himalayas lying between indus and satluj has been traditionally known as punjab himalaya but it is also known regionally as kashmir and himachal himalaya from west to east respectively the part of the himalayas lying between satluj and kali rivers is known as kumaun himalayas the part of the himalayas lying between satluj and kali river is known as kumaun himalayas the kali and tista rivers demarcate the nepal himalayas and the part lying between tista and dihang rivers is known as assam himalayas there are regional names also in these broad categories some regional names of himalayas are ganesh himal langtang himal manaslu himal rolwaling himal jugal himal gauri shankar himal kanji roba himal khumbu himal dholagiri himal purvanchal himalayas etc interesting chapter and it Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. The Brahmaputra marks the easternmost boundary of the Himalayas. Beyond the Dihang Gorge, the Himalayas bend sharply to the south and spread along the eastern boundary of India. They are known as the Purvanchal or the Eastern Hills. These hills running through the northeastern states are mostly composed of strong sandstones. which are sedimentary rocks covered with dense forests they mostly run as parallel ranges and valleys the purvanchal comprises the patkai hills the naga hills the manipur hills and the mizo hills the northern plain has been formed by the interplay of three major river systems namely the indus the ganga and the brahmaputra along with their tributaries this plain is formed of alluvial soil the deposition of alluvium is in a vast basin lying at the foothills of the himalaya over millions of years formed this fertile plain with a rich soil cover combined with adequate water supply and favorable climate it is agriculturally a productive part of india it spreads over an area of 7 lakh square kilometers the plain being about 2400 kilometers long and 240 to 320 km broad is a densely populated physiographic division the rivers coming from northern mountains are involved in depositional work in the lower course due to gentle slope the velocity of the river decreases which results in the formation of riverine islands do you know what are riverine islands please let us know in the comment section below a landmass formed within a river is known as riverine islands Riverine islands are formed when rocks and mud gets deposited in the river bed by flowing rivers. Majuli in the Brahmaputra river is the largest inhabited riverine island in the world. The rivers in their lower course split into numerous channels due to 
the deposition of silt these channels are known as distributaries the northern plain is broadly divided into three sections the western part of the northern plain is referred to as the punjab plains the middle part is the ganga plains the eastern part is the brahmaputra plains formed by the indus and its tributaries the larger part of this plain lies in pakistan the indus and and its tributaries the jhelum river the chenab the ravi the beautiful bias and the satluj originate in the himalaya this section of the plain is dominated by the doabs doab is made up of two words do meaning two and ab meaning water doab is the tract of land between two converging rivers similarly punjab is also made up of two words panj meaning five and ab meaning water punjab is the land of five rivers the ganga plain extends between ghaggar and tista rivers it is spread over north india in haryana delhi uttar pradesh bihar partly jharkhand and west bengal in the east particularly in assam lies the brahmaputra plain the northern plains are described as flat land with no variations in its relief it is not true these vast plains also have diverse relief features according to the variations in relief features the northern plains can be divided into four regions the rivers after descending from the mountains deposit pebbles in a narrow belt of about 8 to 16 km in width lying parallel to the slopes of the shivaliks it is known as bhabar all the streams disappear in this bhabar belt it is not good for cultivation or agriculture only big trees can survive in this region south of this belt the streams and rivers reemerge and create a wet swampy and marshy region known as terai this was a thickly forested region full of wildlife the forests have been cleared to create agricultural land and to settle migrants from pakistan after partition the famous dudwa national park lies in this region the largest part of the northern plain is formed of older alluvium it lies above the flood plains of the rivers and presents a terrace like feature this part is known as bhangar the soil in this region contains calcareous deposits locally known as kankar the newer younger deposits of the flood plains are called khadar they are renewed almost every year and so are fertile thus ideal for intensive agriculture the peninsular plateau the peninsular plateau is a tableland composed of the old crystalline igneous and metamorphic rocks it was formed due to the breaking and drifting of the gondwana land and thus making it a part of the oldest land mass do you know what is gondwana land let us know in the comment section below one of the two ancient supercontinents produced by the first split of the even larger supercontinent pangaea about 200 million years ago comprising chiefly what are now africa south america australia antarctica and indian subcontinent the peninsular plateau has broad and shallow valleys and rounded hills this plateau consists of two broad divisions namely the central highlands and the deccan plateau 
the part of the peninsula plateau lying to the north of the narmada river covering a major area of the malwa plateau is known as the central highlands the vindhyan range is bounded by the satpura range on the south and the aravallis on the northwest the further westward extension gradually merges with the sandy and rocky desert of rajasthan the flow of the rivers draining this region namely the chambal the sin the betwa and the ken is from southwest to northeast thus indicating slope the central highlands are wider in the west but narrower in the east the eastward extensions of this plateau are locally known as the bundelkhand and the bagelkhand the chhota nagpur plateau marks the further eastward extension drained by the damodar river The Deccan Plateau is a triangular landmass that lies to the south of the river Narmada. The Satpura range flanks its broad base in the north, while the Mahadev, the Kaimur Hills, and the Maikal range form its eastern extensions. The Deccan Plateau is higher in the west and slopes gently eastwards. An extension of the plateau is also visible in the northeast, locally known as the Meghalaya. Karbi Anglong Plateau and North Kachar Hills. It is separated by fault from the Chhota Nagpur Plateau. Three prominent hill ranges from the west to the east are the Garo, the Khasi and the Jaintia hills the western ghats and the eastern ghats mark the western and the eastern edges of the deccan plateau respectively western ghats lie parallel to the western coast they are continuous and can be crossed through passes only for example the thal ghat that links nasik to mumbai bhor ghat that links mumbai to pune and palghats that connects kerala to tamil nadu the western ghats are higher than the eastern ghats their average elevation is 900 to 1600 meters as against 600 meters of the eastern ghats the western ghats cause orographic rain by facing the rain bearing moist winds to rise along the western slopes of the ghats orographic rainfall is precipitation produced when the mountains of uplands act as barriers to air flow for forcing the air to rise and the moist air moving up slope cool down by producing clouds and precipitation the western ghats are known by different local names for example Sayadri in Maharashtra Nilgiri hills in Karnataka and Tamil Nadu Anamalai hills and Kajamam hills in Kerala The height of the western ghats progressively increases from north to south The highest peaks include the Anaimudi and the Doda Betta The famous hill station of Udaga Mandalam popularly known as Uti is located in the western ghats at a height of 2240 meters above sea level and is surrounded by hills on all sides The famous hill station of Kodaikanal at 2133 meters forms the eastward spur of the western ghats on the western side of South India The Eastern Ghats stretch from the Mahanadi Valley to the Nilgiris in the south. The Eastern Ghats are discontinuous and irregular and dissected by rivers draining into the Bay of Bengal. Mahindragiri 
is the highest peak in the Eastern Ghats. Chevroy Hills and the Javadi Hills are located to the southeast of the Eastern Ghats. One of the distinct features of the Peninsula Plateau is the black soil area known as Deccan Trap. This is of volcanic origin, hence the rocks igneous. Actually, these rocks have denuded over time and are responsible for the formation of black soil. The Aravali Hills lie on the western and northwestern margins of the Peninsula Plateau. These are highly eroded hills and are found as broken hills. They extend from Gujarat to Delhi in a southwest to northeast direction. The Indian Desert The Indian Desert lies towards the western margins of the Ravali Hills. It is an undulating sandy plain covered with sand dunes. This region receives very low rainfall below 150 mm per year. It has arid climate with low vegetation cover. Streams appear during the rainy season. Soon after, they disappear into the sand as they do not have enough water to reach the sea. Luni is the only large river in this region. Barchans, which are the crescent-shaped dunes, cover larger areas like Jaisalmer, but longitudinal dunes become more prominent near the Indo-Pakistan boundary. The coastal plains. The peninsula plateau is flanked by stretch of narrow coastal strips running along the Arabian Sea on the west and the Bay of Bengal on the east. The western coast sandwiched between Western Ghats and the Arabian Sea is a narrow plain. It consists of three sections. The northern part of the coast is called the Konkan, which runs from Mumbai to Goa. The central part or central stretch is called the Kannad Plain, while the southern stretch is referred to as the Malabar Coast, also known as Spice Garden of India. It stretches from south of Goa to Kanyakumari on India's southern tip. The plains along the Bay of Bengal are wide and level. In the northern part, it is referred to as the Northern Circle, while the southern part is known as Koromandal Coast. Large rivers such as the Mahanadi, the Godavari, the Krishna, the Kaveri have formed extensive delta on this coast. Lake Chilika is an important feature along the eastern coast. The Chilika Lake is the largest saltwater lake in India. It lies in the state of Orissa to the south of the Mahanadi Delta. India has a vast mainland. Besides this, the country has two group of islands. The Lakshadweep Islands group lie close to the Malabar coast of Kerala. This group of islands is composed of small coral islands. Earlier, they were known as Lakadeep, Minikoi, and Amindi. In 1973, these were named as Lakshadweep. It covers a small area of 32 square kilometer. Kavarati Island is the administrative headquarters of Lakshadweep. This island group has great diversity of flora and fauna. The Pitti Island, which is uninhabited, has a bird sanctuary. Elongate chains of islands located in the Bay of Bengal extending from north to south are the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Andaman and Nicobar Islands are bigger in size and are more numerous and scattered. The entire group of islands is divided into two broad categories.
the Andaman in the north, and the Nicobar in the south. It is believed that these islands are an elevated portion of submarine mountains. These island groups are of great strategic importance for the country. There is great diversity of flora and fauna in this group of islands too. These islands lie close to the equator and experience equatorial climate. And it also has thick forest cover. Did you know that India's only active volcano is found on Barren Island in Andaman and Nicobar group of islands? Coral polyps are short-lived microscopic organisms which live in colonies. They flourish in shallow, mud-free and warm waters. They secrete calcium carbonate, the coral secretion and their skeletons from coral deposits in the form of reefs. They are mainly of three kinds. Barrier Reef The Great Barrier Reef of Australia is a good example of the first kind of coral reefs. Fringing Reef And Atolls, which are circular or horse-shaped, shoe-shaped, horseshoe-shaped coral reefs. A detailed account of the different physiographic units highlights the unique features of each region. It could, however, be clear that each region complements the other and makes the country richer in its natural resources. The mountains are the major sources of water and forest wealth. The northern plains are the granaries of the country. They provide for the base for early civilizations. The Plato is a storehouse of minerals, which has played a crucial role in the industrialization of the country. The coastal region and island groups provide sites for fishing and port activities. Thus, the diverse physical features of the land have immense future possibilities of development. Remember to be the best version of yourself, work hard and make a good future. Take care, live a healthy and happy life and be kind to others. If you like the video, please don't forget to hit the like button, share, subscribe and please let us know in the comment section. We love to hear from you. Also, press the bell icon for future notifications too. Have a good day. Bye-bye.